Lewis Hamilton vs Max Verstappen is the gift that just keeps on giving. Their, let's call it intense, rivalry is not quite so white hot on track these days, but that doesn't seem to stop them and their respective teams throwing shade at one another. In the most recent round of verbal jousting, it was Lewis going on the attack. He gave an interview to the Italian edition of Sky Sports F1 in which he cast doubt on the quality of drivers Verstappen has gone up against while racing for Red Bull. Hamilton was essentially making three distinct points. Number one, that he was no more impressed by Verstappen's current domination of F1 than by what the likes of Michael Schumacher, Sebastian Vettel or Fernando Alonso achieved at their respective peaks. Basically, because Max is the clear number one driver within Red Bull and therefore faces no real competition for the championship while Red Bull's car is so dominant. Number two, that the media has been inconsistent in how it's framed Verstappen's domination of Sergio Perez at Red Bull now compared to when Hamilton was dominating against Valtteri Bottas at Mercedes. And number three, the killer blow, that Verstappen has basically had a much easier ride because, in Lewis's personal opinion, Valtteri and actually all my teammates have been stronger than the teammates Max has had. Hamilton is obviously no stranger to dominance himself, having achieved the majority of his own success in F1 from 2014 to 2021, when Mercedes produced a sequence of unquestionably superior cars until Red Bull caught them up. Lewis is essentially saying that Max's achievements now mean a bit less, because he didn't face the same degree of internal competition that Lewis did. Unsurprisingly, this has led to some entertaining back and forth between Mercedes and Red Bull. Verstappen was asked for his reaction by the Dutch media and he shrugged off what Hamilton said in a typically dismissive tone that basically said, just focus on yourself and accept we're doing a better job than you right now. Max suggested Hamilton's comments were coming from a place of jealousy because Mercedes have a very hard time dealing with losing after all these years of winning so much. Naturally, if there's any kind of Mercedes Red Bull spat developing, it's essential we hear what Christian Horner and Toto Wolff have to say about it. There's obviously no love lost between these two either, and although Wolff was prepared to give credit to a great driver in a great car competing on an extremely high level, he also couldn't resist throwing a barb or two in Red Bull's and Verstappen's direction. He called the records Max and Red Bull are currently in the process of shattering completely irrelevant and also told Sky Sports F1's Ted Kravitz that our situation was maybe a little different because we had two guys fighting against each other within the team. When Kravitz put Hamilton's original remarks to Horner, Christian basically ducked the questions as best he could, talking instead about how F1 is not only about teammate comparisons but how you stack up against other teams. He did call Hamilton's remarks about the dominance of Schumacher, Vettel, Alonso, etc. a little strange, given Hamilton's own run of success with Mercedes, but then quickly switched back to PR mode. Later, when asked to address Wolf's comments, Horner took a similar stance, saying he didn't want to get drawn into another war of words with Mercedes, choosing instead to focus on praising Verstappen's driving and very special achievements. Saying we shouldn't detract from those achievements in any way was about the biggest jibe Horner was prepared to make at this point. Horner was very much taking the moral high ground with his remarks, while Wolf's second point, that internal competition within Mercedes was at a higher level when Hamilton was dominating compared to what Verstappen is facing at Red Bull now, strikes to the heart of what Hamilton is trying to say about the relatively easy ride he thinks Verstappen is having. But is it actually fair for Hamilton to cast aspersions on Max and his F1 teammates in this way? Or is Hamilton actually stretching the truth when he says all my teammates have been stronger than the teammates Max has had? Well, let's compare their respective teammates throughout their F1 careers so far and see how Hamilton's bone of contention bears up under scrutiny. To do this, we've awarded a score out of 10 for how tough a challenge we think each teammate was and then averaged them out to account for Hamilton having had six teammates to Verstappen's five. Number 11, Pierre Gasly. The race rating, two out of 10. Gasly has to get the lowest rating simply because he barely made it through half of one season alongside Verstappen. Objectively, Gasly might be considered a better driver overall than others on this list because his career post Red Bull has actually been quite impressive, but the version we saw for the first 12 races of 2019 was deeply underwhelming. This period was especially difficult for Gasly, who focused too much on trying to beat Verstappen, didn't adapt well to the car or team and tended to overdrive, particularly in the corner entry phase, leading Red Bull to quickly lose confidence. Number 10, Heike Kovalainen, the race rating 3 out of 10. Kovalainen was selected by McLaren to be a much more benign presence than Fernando Alonso had been in 2007, meaning McLaren naturally gravitated around Hamilton's superior driving talent. 
Hamilton's driving style meshed particularly well with the 2008 car, very stiff and super responsive at the front, combined with a soft rear for excellent traction, while Kovalainen's preference to U the corners rather than V them tended to overwork the tyres, making him increasingly ineffective in races, something that was amplified by 2009's especially poor McLaren. In comparison terms, Kovalainen looks to Hamilton what Pierre Gasly, Alex Albon, Sergio Perez were slash are to Verstappen, no real threat at all. Number 9, Alex Albon. The race rating, 4 out of 10. Albon did a slightly better job than Gasly, evidenced by the fact Albon was kept on for a full season in 2020 and then retained as reserve driver after being dropped from the race team. Albon's driving style more closely resembled Verstappen's but at a lower threshold of sensitivity, meaning he couldn't live with Red Bull's extreme corner entry instability to quite the same degree and by mid-season was looking visibly tentative and short of confidence in what Red Bull admits was a very difficult and unpredictable car. Albon showed some signs of life in the final few races of 2020, but by then, Red Bull had decided greater consistency and experience was needed for a potential title fight. Number 8, Sergio Perez. The race rating, 5 out of 10. Perez is just about rated the best of the recent bunch of Verstappen victims because he's the only one since Daniel Ricciardo who has shown he can go blow for blow with Verstappen, albeit in very specific circumstances, basically on street circuits and pretty much nowhere else. Perez is similar to Valtteri Bottas in that he does relatively better when the car is some way below its potential but struggles to adapt as the team raises the performance ceiling. Bottas was probably a tougher teammate only because he was more consistently effective across a wider range of circuits as his Q3 appearance record, 103 consecutive top 10s from 2017 to 2022, attests. Perez's peaks have been similar, maybe even slightly higher but with a much greater variance the rest of the time. Number 7, Valtteri Bottas. The race rating, 6 out of 10. Hamilton never tires of telling people how much he loved having Bottas as his teammate, and that's about as damning with faint praise as you can get in this game. No doubt they got on brilliantly and the harmony inside the team improved, but Bottas's apolitical let the best man win approach meant Hamilton nearly always won. Bottas started decently but faded quickly as a force on the other side of the garage, then struggled to deal with being Mercedes' de facto number two driver without the job security of a multi-year contract. A decent qualifier, capable of going blow for blow with Hamilton in a predictable car with consistent track conditions, though not on Fernando Alonso's or Nico Rosberg's comparative level, Bottas was nevertheless consistently much weaker than Hamilton in terms of tyre management, racecraft and maintaining pace in dirty air. Number 6, Jensen Button. The race rating, 7 out of 10. Hamilton went up against Button when Jensen was arguably at his peak, riding the wave of confidence created by his unlikely 2009 World Championship success with Braun GP. It's probably fair to say Button doesn't quite belong in the absolute elite category of an Alonso, but he was a very smooth, consistent and effective operator during this phase of his career, and Hamilton was somewhat erratic. Particularly so in 2011, when Button outscored Hamilton and drove better even than during his title winning season, while Lewis spent lots of time in the stewards room and struggled to balance his high profile personal life with the relentless demands of F1. Number 5, Carlos Sainz. The race rating, 8 out of 10. There's no way you could objectively argue Verstappen had a tougher teammate as a rookie than Hamilton did, but Sainz deserves a high score because he has shown himself to be someone who is near the front of the group of drivers right behind the absolute top tier, similar to Rosberg in terms of relentless self-improvement and also one of the fastest teammates Verstappen has faced. Sainz falls slightly behind Daniel Ricciardo because Sainz came up against the roughest and least experienced version of Verstappen, and although it was fairly close between them at times in 2015, Verstappen was very clearly the better driver with the higher peaks. That said, Sainz was plenty quick enough to create tension that Toro Rosso, now Alpha Tauri, struggled to contain, until Red Bull whipped Verstappen out of there to replace Daniel Kvyat. Number 4, George Russell. The race rating, 8 out of 10. Russell gets the nod over Sainz for fourth spot in our ranking because Russell is going up against the most experienced, well-rounded and decorated version of Hamilton, and giving him a pretty hard time. We've yet to see this battle reach the gloves off stage, but Russell has already shown us a few hints that he is likely to become Hamilton's toughest test since Rosberg. The dynamic is different because this time Hamilton is the established driver and also Mercedes is much less competitive than it was, so it doesn't make sense for them to fight it out while the focus needs to be on rebuilding. Given 2022 was skewed a bit by Hamilton taking on the brunt of the experimental setup and development work, it's probably fair to say he maintains a slight edge on pure pace as well as making fewer mistakes but the potential for Russell, already operating at an extremely high level to improve, is much greater than Rosberg's. Hamilton has certainly got it tougher at the moment than Verstappen has. Number 3, Nico Rosberg. The race rating, 8 out of 10. 
Rosberg edges the three-way tie with Sainz and Russell on account of his superior level of achievement and the fact he pushed Hamilton to improve himself. Hindsight suggests Rosberg was one of Hamilton's tougher teammates, simply because he made a proper fight of the World Championship in 2014 and 2016 and Rosberg got better and better through that period, rather than being crushed under the weight of Hamilton's brilliance. Rosberg came up against a better balanced version of Hamilton than Button did and also unsettled Hamilton like no other teammate has, using all of his wit and guile to get under Hamilton's skin and to stabilise him sufficiently to get the 2016 title over the line, with the aid of Hamilton's unfortunate reliability record. Rosberg is also the best qualifier Hamilton has faced in his career. In 2014 and 16, Rosberg was enough of a consistent threat that Hamilton had to spend the subsequent winters evolving his own approach to be more rounded, rather than relying simply on being the better natural driver most of the time. Number 2. Daniel Ricciardo. The race rating, 9 out of 10. Ricardo is Verstappen's most decorated and celebrated teammate so far in F1, and in 2016 was consistently among the absolute top performers on the grid. He edges ahead of Rosberg in our ranking on the basis he was widely considered by F1 insiders, including Fernando Alonso, to be the absolute best driver on the grid in 2016, which was also Rosberg's best season in F1. This version of Ricardo was probably the best we've seen, a confident, established frontrunner with, like Button, a deft touch at getting the most from the especially delicate Pirelli tyres. Verstappen was right on Ricardo's case from their first race together though, and by the end of 2017 it was clear the team was moving in Verstappen's direction. Overall, Max was clearly the stronger of the two, but it was always a closer run thing than it has been at any time since Ricardo left. Number 1. Fernando Alonso. The race rating, 10 out of 10. Alonso is unquestionably the best out-and-out -out driver among this group of 11, and for Hamilton it didn't get much tougher than going up against the double world champion and conqueror of Michael Schumacher no less in Hamilton's rookie F1 season. Alonso, even back then, was clever, experienced and relentlessly competitive. It helped that Hamilton was already very well established at McLaren as a young driver, but even so, to match Alonso for points and beat him 6-2 for pole positions stands as probably the greatest rookie season by anyone in F1 ever. On our website we tallied up the final scores and then averaged them out to help get a proper read on who overall faced the toughest set of teammates. Hamilton's average F1 team at level comes out at 7.0 out of 10, while Verstappen's averages out at 5.6 out of 10. So, broadly speaking, Hamilton is making a valid point in the sense that it's clear from our ratings Hamilton has overall faced a tougher set of teammates than Verstappen has so far, but it's also fair to say Hamilton has stretched his point by claiming all his own teammates were stronger than any Verstappen has faced. That summary conveniently ignores Kovalainen and also overestimates Bottas, as well as underestimating what Sainz and Ricardo achieved in the early years of Verstappen's career. Hamilton actually forgot to mention Nico Rosberg until prompted in his Sky interview, which perhaps says something about the degree to which even Hamilton's famously bad memory has tried to block out that tumultuous period of his Mercedes career. He's clearly particularly fixated on the Bottas-Perez comparison, feeling that the key difference is that Mercedes, as with Rosberg, allowed Bottas to try to beat Hamilton fair and square, and only called him off once it became clear Hamilton was the only horse for Mercedes to back in a close title fight. Rosberg never got called off because in that period Mercedes faced no serious external competition for the World Championship and Bottas was consistently made to fall into line because Mercedes had to try to see off threats from Ferrari and Red Bull. Hamilton will feel the dynamic at Red Bull has been much different and clearly in favour of Verstappen at all times, but that certainly wasn't true in the early phase of Verstappen's career. Sainz and Ricciardo in particular represented very stern tests of Max's credentials. Hamilton's analysis also ignores the incredible job Verstappen has done to progress so quickly and make Red Bull his own through sheer force of will and ability. Ricardo was very much ensconced at that outfit, having seen off four-time champion Vettel, yet ultimately couldn't live with Verstappen once Max tempered his exuberance and became a more rounded driver. It is true to say that in going up against Alonso, Button, Rosberg and now arguably Russell too, Hamilton has overall had it tougher than Verstappen has. It's incredibly rare in F1 history for one driver to have collected such an illustrious set of teammates, three of them world champions in their own right. Hamilton is certainly having a tougher time of it than Verstappen now too, but when a great driver is operating at the peak of their powers in a team that's operating as effectively as Red Bull is right now, something Hamilton does acknowledge at least, it almost doesn't matter who is in the other car. And you can bet Verstappen would be similarly as effective as Hamilton should he face someone like Alonso in equal equipment. All three will go down among the greatest talents F1 has ever seen.